how about we finally just master having periods and menopause and talk about them and live to tell about it later, right? I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns, but mostly we hope to inspire you about what aging can be, about what menopause, for that matter, can be, and what it doesn't have to be. And I address those top things like what to eat, how to move, and how to change your mindset, something we talked about a little bit today, so that you can have the energy and the vitality that you want, need, and deserve in the second and better half. And my guest today is, I will tell you right off, transparently, it's a tease. She does have a summit coming up, but whether you go to the summit, you click on it and find more information about it, or you just enjoy this conversation. You want to stick around until the end. It's a fairly short podcast, but we play a rapid fire and I shoot her the top concerns that I hear from women. Not not just that we see posted on social media, but the ones that women complain about when I'm opening up with their intake session on how they're doing and what they want to change if they're working with me on a in a one-on-one situation. And I also mentor a lot of fitness professionals and health coaches going into working with women in midlife and themselves. So I hear these over and over again. And I rapid fired about eight or nine different symptoms to her and she volleyed them back to me giving, here's what I think this could be, where where I would start. And then I took her by surprise. I did not let her know I was going to do that in advance. So in fairness to her, you've heard it from me, but stick around for that because I think you will realize very quickly that there is an arsenal. And yet for certain things, that could be an integrated process of getting to the right answer. What you want is somebody who knows what are those integrated things and will organize them by priority, probably based on asking you some other questions rather than drilling down saying, here's the one tool I have, here you go. All right. My guest today is returning, Dr. Sharon Stills. She's a naturopathic medical doctor who helps perimenopausal and menopausal women to pause and evaluate life so they can live the second act of their story stronger, healthier, and sexier while aging backwards. Using her 20 plus years of experience and extensive training and background in European biological medicine, anti-aging therapies, and bioidentical hormone replacement, she's successfully helped thousands of women transition gently through the different stages of their lives with all natural methods. Dr. Stills is passionate about spreading the word about her signature Red Hot Sexy Menopause Program. Now, the pause is in parentheses, which you can't see. The philosophy she developed for you to reinvent your health, explore your spirit, discover your sexy, so that you too can create and live the life you desire and deserve. She founded and ran one of the largest, most successful naturopathic clinics in the country for a decade, and she is the host of the Science of Self-Healing podcast. She's an expert physician for Women's Health Network, and she educates other physicians as the co-lead North American lecturer for the Paracelsus Academy in Switzerland. Now, no wonder I couldn't pronounce that right. Patients work with Dr. Sills in a variety of ways through telemedicine consults and her life-changing retreats for individuals or small groups in healing and rejuvenating locations around the world. Some patients will even fly out to see her and just to get on the chance to work with her one-on-one. By the way, if you come out here to Arizona to see her, you be sure you stop by. All right, let's dive into this episode. Dr. Sharon Steeles, welcome back. 
Hi, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I can't wait to talk to you. And I'm like, okay, we could talk about menopause too. And I suppose we need to, but I really want to talk about the damn red dress, girl. <laughs> I mean, that I, it's iconic looking at you. And then you have this red flame hair that just like makes it even so much better. <laughs> Behind the scenes in the green room, we were talking just a little bit about there's actually a story about the dress. So maybe explain that because maybe listeners don't know when they're looking at this dress thinking, wow, stunning. Maybe they don't know any better than I did. Maybe they do. I'll give you all credit, listeners. But talk a little bit about how that picture happened and and then we'll unpack what it just really represents. Mm, yeah, because red represents a yeah. lot. <laughs> and every woman should have their little or their flying red dress. So basically, it, I was last minute invited to Santorini, Greece to officiate my cousin's wedding. Nobody, and- nobody calls me to do things like that, <laughs> ever. <laughs> and so I thought... Wow, I had seen on Facebook like a month or two earlier this flying red dress photo shoot in Santorini. And I thought, wow, that's a bucket list item. And so when I realized I was going to be going over there, I thought, I'm going to make this happen because I think life and iconic moments and really stepping into our power happens when we just kind of say, I'm going to make this happen. Mm. And, and, and so I did, I became a Santorini model for the day. And, and it's funny because you see a lot of younger girls doing this in their twenties or their thirties. And I thought, no, I am in my fifties and I am going to rock this. (laughs) And I am going to be a model for a day and I'm going to really step into, as I do everything for myself and then for all of you to remind you, to remind myself that as we age, we get more powerful, we get more beautiful, we become more confident. And so that's kind of how I went into it. I so love it. And that is everything that it represented for me looking at that. It was just like layer upon layer upon layer of, oh my gosh. I mean, I want that. I want, yes, I want to be in Greece and uh, and <laughs> in the red dress, although I don't think I would like it afterwards. I could see that. But I want that confidence that here I am, take it or leave it. This is what I'm doing. Mm. And I have to tell you, the dress comes with an assistant because that is a, <laughs> <laughs> that is a serious dress. <laughs> so it, it needs an assistant to to handle it. And it it was a lot of fun. You, everyone is looking at me and they're like, "Who's that chick? And why yeah. is she standing on rooftops?" And and honestly, modeling is it, it's not easy work. It was hot. My feet were burning. My eyes were burning from the sun glaring in it. And it was by the time we were done, I felt like I had just done a workout. <laughs> <laughs> that is fun. I kind of know that feeling. Actually, my last uh, video shoot was intended to be in the cool near the water near the res in Boulder, Colorado in June. Well, it was like 100 degrees. And it, for whatever reason, it was humid. I was only doing yoga and I was, my feet were burning on a black mat. It was, I had tears in my eyes. Every five minutes I said to my cameraman, I'm sorry, I can't do it. I can normally suck it up, but I have to move the mat. We have to find shade. (laughs) It is. So it was, I enjoyed it and I, I barreled through it. I was like, okay, I can do this. But yeah, my feet were hot. (laughs) Amazing. Okay. So that in mind, I mean, while we're talking, everybody knows we're audio only as far as the podcast goes, because it makes it so much easier to listen on your commute. You don't need to watch it. But I have in my head this image of you. And I'd love to know if you could wave a magic wand and have women know things about menopause, what top three things would you like to have them know before they arrive? 
Mm, top three. One would be their mindset, how they think about menopause and how they think about what this means and really getting clear and unpacking that menopause is not a disease. Menopause is a transition that we are all going to go through, that aging is a privilege, and that menopause can be this sacred second act of your life that you can stand with that flying red dress and you can just rock the world. And that this is a time where we can utilize all our wisdom and all our life experiences and really step into the women we are meant to be and not care about what others are thinking and really not, not, not care, but not be so focused on others needs, but really turn the focus inward to what do we need? So I think that would be the first thing is just really turning around how we view it. Because if we go into menopause thinking it's all over and we're going to get fat and ugly and never want to have sex again, then it, it's hard to really be empowered in this transition. Beautifully said. So that would be the first one. The second one would be that everything you've probably heard about hormones is probably false. <laughs> and, that, and that's why I put together this Mastering the Menopause Transition Summit so we can get the truth out there about how to utilize hormones in a safe way, in an effective way, whether it's for utilizing symptom reduction and getting better sleep and getting rid of hot flashes and having clearer brain function, or it's just to grow older gracefully and prevent Alzheimer's and cardiovascular and osteoporosis and all of these chronic illnesses that we worry about, that the truth about hormones really needs to be understood so you can make them part of your plan on how you're going to have your hormonal journey. Uh, Because it's not just about hormones. They're a piece. They're an important piece. But then the third thing (laughs) would be about learning about how you need to diet, how you need to exercise, which is why I loved that you are part of the summit and really set us straight and gave us some great permissions on what we can and can't do. And that we need to really think about how we're eating. We're not 15-year-old girls anymore, thank goodness. (laughs) And so how we move our bodies, how we nurture our bodies, the kind of sleep we need, that changes and that's okay. And we just need to get educated on how we need to grow and change our actions to fuel an amazing experience as we age. I love that. I want to come back into your first one. You said mindset, of course. When you think about how much we're all on social media, like it or hate it. I mean, (laughs) we still are compulsively there, I think. And sometimes to communicate with, with our kids, but how, if you had to say it's either this side or that side, how positive is social media in promoting a positive mindset of menopause versus negative, setting us up for thinking it's going to be doom and gloom. Mm. I I think if you're following people like myself and you, it's very positive, but I think we are still in the minority and need to become the majority. Another reason why I put together this summit, but that out there, it's mainly about all about just getting rid of your hot flashes. And um, it's not really empowering. It's kind of like, yeah, you're old and now you're useless and let's be young and let's be beautiful. And that's what everyone is trying to to reclaim. And so I'm all about 
owning where you are now. I don't want to go back to being 15 or 20 or 25. I want to be happily present in my 54 years that I am. And I think we do a big um, misservice, disservice to women out there when we when we don't allow them to accept themselves for where they are and we make them feel bad about aging and wishing they could be younger again. Amen. All right. Well, I think, spoiler alert, you may have answered this question, but I'm going to ask it more bluntly. If I said to you, anti-aging therapies versus pro-aging therapies, which label feels to you like a better fit? Pro-aging, in, mm-hmm. enlightened aging, <laughs> uh, happily aging. Yes, we, we're not a we're not against aging. And now that's not to say that you can't reverse the aging process because I see my patients do it all the time. I've personally done it. I'm certainly healthier now than I was 30 years ago. And so, but to me, it's about slowing it down. It's about adding not only quantity of years to your life, but quality in those years. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to say this to you because these are probably, even me as a fitness professional, I hear all three of these and man, you can hear that probably one, maybe a second one is really not within my scope so much. But if I say, sex, skin, and fat. And the greatest of these is you fill in the blank. And what I mean is like, this is the greatest concern of women, the majority of them, when they hit that transition, how would you answer that? Which one is the most, I've got my attention now, here it is. I would probably say fat Mm -hmm. and skin than sex. And really? okay. which, which kind of makes me sad because I think a lot of women just think it's normal that I don't want to have sex or that sex is painful and that part of my life is over. And so they don't really come in as concerned about that as they should be. I'd like you all to get more concerned about that. We are sexual <laughs> beings and we could and should, and I hate to use the should word, but we should be having amazing sex throughout our lives. And if sex is painful, then that's your body's way of saying something's out of balance. There's a hormone deficiency. And with the right balancing, painful sex can be a thing of the past. And so I I want us to start thinking that, yeah, I deserve to have a good sex life. I deserve mind-blowing orgasms. This is my birthright. And and having sex is is a healthy way of expressing ourselves. Orgasms, they feel great, but they also support our pelvic floor. They decrease urinary tract infections. They enhance our DHEA production. They release oxytocin. They release endorphins. I mean, I, one of my favorite prescriptions for insomnia is to have an orgasm before bed. And so I think there's a lot of sexual medical benefits as well as the feel good. And then whether you're with a partner, it's connecting to that partner, or if you're single, connecting to yourself. And so I'd like to see that become more of a priority. I think that we we focus on the fat and the skin because those are things we can see. Mm. And we are a very visual society. And so we can't really see our liver and whether it's clogged or whether it's overworked or whether it's deficient in certain biochemical cofactors. So we don't think about it as much, but we see the skin issues, which very often are coming from a clogged liver. We see the weight being put on. And so we feel uncomfortable when we look in the mirror or when we try and zip up our jeans. And I, so I think we're more driven by that. Yeah. I think that's so good. You'll appreciate this based on your answer. I had this conversation just today with a friend of mine. We were talking about um, sleep and I said, I'm going to share this with you. I said, this is really kind of funny that 
you know, when I talk about getting better sleep and how important that is, and, and of course we were talking about sex just now, but it's, it's very telling. Like I'll have women who gladly will sleep in the other room from their spouse or significant other, but not their dog. <laughs> like, like, no, you know, if the dog is the reason that, that she's getting woken up, she's not going to leave the dog. She'll leave the husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to... <laughs> We love our furry friends. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I think this is potentially the juiciest question of all because all my listeners are so many of them also have daughters or daughter-in-laws or younger women that they mentor related to or not. What's the ideal to s- time to start prepping for menopause? Oh my, now, today, yesterday, <laughs> right away. <laughs> I mean, honestly, and I, you know, and I do, I work with, I work with women of all ages and including, I, I see pediatric patients, I see teenagers. A lot of times women come to me and I end up seeing their whole family. I actually started out as a pediatrician. So I think that if you are having issues if the the younger woman in your life is having premenstrual problems, if they're having weight issues, if they're having mood issues, then the time is now because PMS is is not really a disease. It's a it's a reflection of an imbalance in hormones and in the liver and in the lymph and all sorts of other things, biochemical processes. So it's a reflection of that. So if you're having, a lot of times we just think, oh, this is how it goes. I get my period and I'm in bed for three days, or of course I'm bloated for a week before my period. And we don't really think of it as some as our body saying to us, hello, you're out of balance. I need some attention. And so certainly if, if the younger women in your life are having issues, and if this is heavy periods, lack of periods, if they're having fertility issues, all of these issues are a sign of a hormonal imbalance. And if you can get them balanced earlier, then the perimenopause and menopausal transition are going to be so much more fluid and so much easier. I mean, that was my own personal story. I was in my early 30s when I went into my medical practice, and it was right when Suzanne Summers' Bioidentical Hormone book had come out, and a woman brought it to me and asked for that. And so I I helped her with her hormones, and I all of a sudden became a huge bioidentical hormone menopausal clinic because she told two friends who told two friends and so on, like that shampoo <laughs> commercial. And I was in my early 30s walking around looking like I was pregnant. I was so bloated with premenstrual issues. So I was doing all these things to help all of these women rock their menopausal transition. And I thought, I need to apply the same thing to myself. And so I did. I started looking at my liver and my lymph and my neurotransmitters and balancing my hormones and all of the things that I was doing for them and lo and behold, I went from looking like I was eight months pregnant premenstrual to flattening out my stomach and feeling great. And I no longer suffered with premenstrual issues. And so by the time I went through menopause, it was just, it was ease and grace for me. And I, I literally, I never had a hot flash, which is not something many women can say. I never had any symptoms. And I'm not some special human being who has powers that you don't have. I just really pre-gamed and focused on my hormones and my health so that when I got there, it was an easy transition as it is supposed to be. And so, you know, emphatically to answer your question, I mean it when I say right away, prevention is such a powerful tool to use in our health. And so, and as I mentioned, of course, certainly if the younger ones in your life are having issues that are hormonally related. Yeah, I love that. That was gold right there, truly. And I think that's the one thing because 
because I began this not until I was 49, really digging into it and realizing, oh my gosh, there's so many women not being served here that I'm going to, I'm going to answer this call. And because we're in the conversation so deeply, I think there still is a uh, kind of a myth, you know, feeling that, well, my daughter doesn't need to pay attention to that now. I mean, she's fine. She's in her twenties or she's, you know, in her thirties. And, and I'm like, mm, okay, <laughs> I'm going to focus on you. I'm just, let's do this. And then we'll kind of come back and let's get them. But I, I think there's so much value there. Cause I think they will, they'll just get to this and, and eat it up in such a different way and be so much more powerful. It, it really sets the stage. And again, just to emphasize, if, if your younger woman in your life is having no periods, heavy periods, premenstrual issues, fertility issues, all of the headaches, migraines, acne, all of these things, they're signs that the hormones are out of balance. And don't let anyone tell you that it's not a hormonal issue or that the birth control pill will fix it because it won't, it will just compound and add to the problems. Beautifully said. All right. I would love to play a little game if you're, if you're open to that. Sure. I love games. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, and this may be an unfair game because I'm going to give you no facts, no behind the scenes details and just ask you. So if I, if I say, you know, a menopause sign or symptom or a nuisance and you say, you know, what would be a remedy or a first step, first place that you would look for starting something? And I realize that it's going to leave you potentially saying, oh, but wait, I want to ask five more questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to start with painful intercourse. Low estrogen in the vaginal canal. Mm -hmm. How about just no desire for sex? Hmm. All the hormones and also really looking at, do you love your dog more than you love your husband? <laughs> Hot flashes. <laughs> oh, dropping estrogen. Belly fat. Hmm. I mean, the, the easy one, the one that we all think of is high cortisol, but I have to say that is not always what I see in clinical practice. Uh, sometimes the belly fat is there and the high cortisol is actually low cortisol. It's You've already burned through your cortisol. And so um, definitely looking at your stress levels, looking at your cortisol levels, and also looking at, and you know, this is your area of expertise, but looking at what your workout routine is and what your, you know, how you're, how you're moving your body, how you're feeding your body, how you're sleeping. All right. I've given you like eight things already. That, that's a complex <laughs> one. <laughs> Insomnia. Oh, low progesterone. <laughs> <laughs> Feelings of depression or anxiety. No, no mojo. Mm, that is a complex one. That could be low estrogen, low progesterone. That could be low neurotransmitters. That could be a low thyroid. That could be toxicity. That one is a, is a loaded gun. There's a lot of things to look at there. Forgetfulness. Hmm. Estrogen, progesterone. Est yeah, as the estrogen drops, that's one of the, the biggest things. I mean, the progesterone and the testosterone are dropping too, but estrogen feeds the brain. It's one of the main things to protect against Alzheimer's. And also low thyroid can really contribute to forgetfulness. Okay. Last but not least, gut issues that are making it feel impossible to quote unquote eat healthy. So do you mean like I eat a salad and I get bloated kind of yeah, thing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that could be, I, I can't give you just one, that could be eating <laughs> while stressed. And so you're not chewing and liquefying your food. That can be you're eating the wrong foods for you. 
that could be that you have a really imbalanced microbiome and your stomach acid is low, your pancreatic enzymes are low, your gallbladder is not secreting what it should be secreting, like cholecystokinin. So that is also a real multifactorial one. But if, if it's salads and they're bloating you, try steaming your veggies. It's easier mm-hmm. to digest. Sweet. Okay, that was that's quite a list, and you were you were <laughs> amazing. Wow, like a good I, game contestant. It's hard to. Yeah, oh my gosh, you are. Yes. So I'm going to stack the deck. You know, when we get together over here for my housewarming, I'm you're on my team. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you you have this summit coming up, and I'm in. And okay. grateful. And you and I chat at dinner about life and menopause and travel and all the things. You've got a busy practice, a crazy travel schedule. And when you're at home, you're like grandma on steroids. <laughs> I mean, what is the importance of hosting a summit to you? Which to all listeners, you know, summits come in here and they go and I, I tell you about certain ones. That they're hard work <laughs> for the host. There's really got to be a mission. So why for you? Why now? You hinted a little bit about that, but anything more you want to add to why this and why now? Yeah. So I, I did. We talked about the red dress in the beginning, and I didn't really talk about the color red. Mm-hmm. And I do have red hair, although it's turning blonde because that's what happens as redheads age. <laughs> and so, but I, I'm really big on colors and their impact in our life and using them medicinally. And red is such a powerful color. It's all about passion and circulation and movement and energy and love And so this is kind of my red gift to women because it is a lot of work. You you, you are, I had no idea how much work it was. And, And it's all, it's a labor of love for me, but I am just, I'm sick and tired of women not hearing the truth of women suffering, of women struggling, and of women not stepping into their power in this important part of our lives. We live half, two thirds of our lives postmenopausal. And I'm on a mission to really change the experience, the conversation, and for women to heal. I I can't tell you how many women I see in my private practice who have been struggling and suffering. And within a month of doing some diagnostic tests on them and getting them on the right support and the right diet and the right hormones, their life just changes. And then they can be more involved in their families, in their communities, in their gifts, in their work, what they want to give to the world. And so it's time for us to really own our power and we we have these physical vessels and we need to feel good in them so then we can go share our gifts and our passions. Amazing. Yeah, love that and echo all of what you've just said. So for listeners, the link so that you can register, look at the details and and make a decision over whether you want to spend some time and I know you'll want to and I also want to say this. Time is valuable. I think sometimes we resist wanting one more thing on our schedule or another thing to attend, but I urge you to use, you know, summits like this as, you know, go to it, pick and choose. If you can't do the whole thing, don't flush it away. Look at the ones where you need this. You know, I am so honored to be a speaker, but I also think you all listening, you get me all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the reason for you all to tune in is because of, first of all, my guest today and the fantastic job she's done vetting based on who she is and you just heard it. So to go and to register, learn more, flipping50.com forward slash Master Menopause is where you'll learn a little bit more, see the schedule, and um, save your spot. And remember, share this. So this is not one that you only want to 
keep to yourself. Don't be hoarding care. You want to share this with those (laughs) young women you mentor and open up the conversation. Many of you, I'm thinking, maybe like me, you know, my mother and I never, I don't think we ever uttered the word menopause in the same room Mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, it is. I'd be honored for you to join us there. And if you hear one thing that changes your health, your life, your experience, then it was time well spent. And there are so many juicy tidbits throughout every interview in the summit that it really can be a game changer. So I just look forward to creating a a movement of women who are who are mastering their menopause transition and beyond. I love it. Absolutely love it. All right, listeners, now it's your turn. If there was one of those rapid fire questions that you wish I would have asked, I'd love for you to put it below the show notes and you will be able to find that at flipping50.com forward slash master. So what are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today. 